our next speaker is Muriel Bruckner. She is at U Utrecht University and uh, also works on estuaries. Um, and um, her talk today will be on uh, bioturbation and nut distribution uh, in estuarine systems. Yes, hello everyone. Thanks Irina for the introduction and thank you for having me at this uh, summer series of CSDMS. I'm very happy to be able to talk about my modeling eff uh, efforts uh, by combining bioturbation and uh, estrogen morphology. And uh, I, I want to present today to you my model that I developed together with my co-authors, which combines bioturbation and uh, a hydromorphodynamic model of an estuary. And we haven't been talking about estuaries yet, so I'm very excited to um, show you how exciting it is to work to, uh, with estuarine morphology. This is an example of the Dovey estuary. And as you can see, an estuary is governed by both the river discharge here on the right hand side of the picture and by the tides. Um, and the morphology of the estuary is governed by lots of different processes. So the, channel, the channels and the bar pattern are actually governed by not only the tides, but also by species that grow in the middle of the estuary. And that is actually the topic of my PhD to find out how important they are. So when we look at these eco-engineering species, uh, I will talk about bioturbators today, and they are very often overlooked uh, because they're really small, but they occur in large abundances. So they might have a large effect on the morphology of an estuary because they live in the sediment and they move around. And by doing so, they kind of increase the erodibility of the sediment, which will lead to larger erosion rates. And the sediment has to go somewhere. So I would like to find out where does the sediment go? Does it deposit somewhere else in the estuary or is it exported? So ultimately, these species might have a large scale effect on the morphology of estuaries. So uh, for my study, I look at two contrasting bioturbators, which are very abundant in Northwestern Europe. Probably also have something similar, even the same species in the States, but I don't know very much about that. Um, but um, these two species are quite important because they are a quite dominant species in, in uh, northwestern estuaries. And they're cost, uh, contrasting in a way that they prefer different types of habitat. So the uh, lugworm on the left hand side, Arnicola marina, is usually growing in sandy environments that are quite dynamic, while the mushroom, Coropium volatator, prefers muddy sediments and occurs in more calmer regions of the estuary. But this is not the only difference. They also have a different effect on the bioturbation. So our Nicola Marina has a quite small bioturbation potential compared to coropium. That means that if our Nicola is present, then not so much sediment will be eroded compared to the mushroom, uh, which will have also different effects on the morphology. And what's also very interesting to know is that these species are actually competitive. So when they occur both in the same environment, then Aranicola will be dominant over Coropium, and Coropium will leave the area where Aranicola moves in. So to come to my research question, I would like to know how large is the effect of each of these species uh, on estuarine morphology, and what happens if we combine these species. So I look at the mud distribution of an estuary after 50 years of morphological evolution. And to do that, I use a coupled model of a hydromorphodynamic model in Delft 3D flow and uh, a bioturbation uh, model that I wrote in MATLAB to represent the species. And in the top panel, you can see my idealized estuarine domain. Uh, so we have on the left hand side the tides and the ocean, and on the right hand side the river. And I let the morphology evolve uh, with the sandbars and also quite some extensive mud flats already, especially along the river and on the, on the tidal bars. And then I couple this domain to my species model, which means that um, where the species occur, they will change the erodibility of the mud. Uh, species also have an effect on the sand, but usually it's supposed to be a higher effect on the uh, mud erodibility. So I only parameterize the effect on the mud, which means I change the critical batch shear stress in the erosion parameter which basically is just, uh, just means that the erodibility of the mud is increased when the species are present, uh, present. But on the other side of the feedback loop, we also have an effect of the hydromorphology on the species distribution. 
So based on literature, I parameterize the species distribution based on inundation period, flow velocity, and mud content. And I couple these two models every M2 tide. So there's a continuous uh, update of the species and the hydromorphology along with the simulation. And then I look at the results after 50 years. And this is what it looks like. So we see here the species abundance on the bathymetry of the estuary. And on the top panel in red, you see that our Nicola marina is really abundant. It grows um, in large parts of the estuary, especially in the mouth and in the center. While Corophium volatator is restricted to the sides of the estuary, where we also previously saw all the mudflats before. So this makes sense. But interestingly, if we combine both species, then Corophium uh, almost disappears. So there are only a few small patches here and on the bars where the species can still survive because of the competition effect with Aranicola. But what's even more interesting is that Aranicola is uh, able to expand to the sides of the estuary where it couldn't uh, occur in the first scenario with only Aranicola present. So there seems to be kind of like a positive feedback between the species that Corophium changes their morphology and then Arnicola is able to actually extend and expand its habitat. So if we then look at the morphology, on the right hand side we have the, the mud distribution in the estuary and these colors indicate the, the difference of the mud compared to a reference run that has no species. So basically everything that's blue in the area means that there is more erosion when species are present. And if it's red, then there is more accretion than when there are no species present. And everything is blue. So there is quite a large effect on the of the species on the mud fraction in the estuary. And especially uh, the, the scenarios that include corovium um, reduce uh, large mud fractions at the sides of the estuary. And if we, if we compare the middle and the lower uh, panels, so the scenarios where corophium actually occurs, we, we see kind of a similarity between the results. So apparently the, the efficient biotope beta corophium determines the morphology of the estuary compared to the, um, to, uh, compared to the lacworm aranicola. So to conclude, um, the mud content reduces under bioturbation and there is an export from the system because we haven't seen any depositional areas. CV is the dominant eco-engineer because it governs the morphological development even if there's several species present. And then there is a kind of this positive eco-engineering effect between the species that facilitate the occurrence of Aranicola uh, when there are several species present. And why is this important? Why should you consider these species? Well, if they have such a large effect on the, on the large scale morphology, and we know there's habitat, habitat degradation or there are pollutants that threat these species, then there might be species shifts, and that will lead to different effects on the morphology that we should consider. Thank you very much for, the, for listening to my presentation. Thank you, Muriel.